This is a Shields of Shame exclusive. 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 Meet Lieutenant Ella Wadley, a corrections officer at the Washington State Prison located in Davisboro, Georgia. In a startling turn of events, corrections officer Lieutenant Ella Wadley finds herself at the center of controversy. Wadley stands accused of attempting to conceal crucial facts surrounding a violent assault on an inmate by correctional officer Quentin Rudolph Darasaw. Shockingly, the inmate was left locked in a shower, lying on the floor for hours following the attack. It's alleged that Wadley even instructed another officer to alter their statement in favor of Darasaw. Now for the first time, Wadley breaks her silence on the events of June 16, 2015. Stay tuned as we bring you her exclusive interview and delve deeper into this unfolding scandal. As we bring you this crucial report, we extend our deepest gratitude for your unwavering support. Your commitment to truth and justice empowers us to pursue stories like this with vigor. To continue accessing exclusive content of this caliber, we invite you to join our membership program for just 99 cents. Additionally, your contributions to the Open Records Fund play a pivotal role in our ability to uncover the truth. Together, we can shed light on even the darkest corners of injustice. Thank you for standing with us. Alright. Um... Do you remember in my, I guess you still have Dylan. I guess he's still here, right? Um, uh, for what I know he is. Okay. Um, Do you okay. remember the incident that I'm talking about? Yes, it was concerning, uh, I don't know what day it happened on. You know, I know it's that afternoon. The 13 had took him down there, and they, we didn't have no space at the time, and they put him in the shower. Okay. So, uh, I think it was during count, I'm not sure exactly. The officer from down there, I don't know whether it was Swint, um, I believe it was Officer Swint, called me and told me to come to J2. I told him as soon as I get through the count, I'll be down there. So I asked him what was going on, and he said that uh, something going on with Daly. They had opened up the door to put him in a room, and when they opened the door, he bust out the room, bust out the, the shower door, and fell by the telephone phone. Okay. I said, well, just leave him alone till I get there. Don't bother. So when I got down there, they had got him back in the shower. He was laying in the floor of the shower. So I went up and I asked him, I said, Daly, get up so I can get you in the room. And he said, I'm not going to move. I'm, I'm hurting in my back. I was a Darisol hit me in my back. So I asked all the other officers what happened. And as usual, they don't know. I don't know, Lou. I don't know. So I, I told him I got to, went to Daly again. I said, Daly, get up. I'm going to put you in the room. And he said, I need to see medical. I said, medical is not here. And I will put you down to see urgent care in the morning. I then called the duty officer and told him what was going on. Do the officer said, so we'll just let him alone and uh, we'll get him to medical the next morning. So I told him, okay. So I told the officer to make sure they check on him every 15 minutes to make sure he's all right. So I called back about 30 minutes later and they told me he was asleep. That was it. So you, I'm trying to catch up. So you go down to J2, mm -hmm. you see him in the cell. He's like, hey, I'm in pain because there's all... Hit That's our hidden, yes. And he wants to go to medical. Mm -hmm. And what did you say about medical again? So we don't have 24-hour medical here, but I will put you on the urgent care list to be seen by the doctor the first thing in the morning. Who's the duty officer? I think it was Mr. Mabry that night. You know, Manager Mabry. How do you spell his last name? M-A-C-B-R-I-D-E. M-A-C? B-R-I-D-E, Mabry. Okay. I think that's who it was. So he tells you to leave him in the shower until the following morning when he can see medical? Yes, and he would, they would get him to see medical in the morning. And what did you tell them to do? To. You said something about a 15-minute watch? Yes, I told them to make sure they keep a 15-minute watch on him, to make sure he's okay and there's nothing going on with him. So I called back about 30 minutes later, and they told me he was asleep. They had checked on him, and he had gone to sleep. All right, I'm going to read you something in just a second. Okay. So there's your incident report. Here's the, uh, that sir, sir. Are you with the officers when they write these statements? No. Most of the time they write them while they're on the dorm and just brings them up. And they bring them to you? Mm 
Are you the next reviewing official that sees them? Yes. Okay. All right. The reason I ask you that, and the and the point of why I'm here to talk with you, do you have direct supervision over officers Higgins and Swint still? Or are they on a different shift? No, they're on a different shift. Okay. And Darisol's gone. He's at He's River Bend or something. Well, it's, uh, yeah, that's what I heard. He's at. They work evenings. Who? Uh, Swint. Swint them now. Yes. The reason, the point that I want to come ask you about the original interview or the original written statements by Hagens and Swint are very different from a set of statements that they made the other day. To the point that when we asked why they were different, they said, uh, specifically uh, Officer Swint, that you told them they need to change it. I haven't talked with them anymore about it. I haven't discussed that, with them anymore. Back, back on the, this is, we're still on the day this happened or whenever y'all are doing the paperwork. His original statement is very, very different from the one that he filled out the other day. And we asked him about that. Why is it different? What's going on? He says, well, when I was in there with Lieutenant, and I'm, I'm not saying exactly what he said, basically when he's in there with you and he turns his written statement and you reviewed it and said he needed to change it. So then he changes it and his second statement is very, very detailed. Now, when we interviewed him and we interviewed Officer Hagens, it was separately. Their statements came back almost identical to what happened. And you weren't down there when all this happened, okay? So whatever happened down there with Darisol happened with Darisol, okay? Right. What, I'm, what I want to talk to you is about what happened later, okay? So they provided a lot more detail about what happened with Officer Darisol and uh, the inmate. We interviewed the inmate, and it's they're all three pretty much jiving with each other now. Where there was a lot of differences before, now that's all been brought back in together. Okay, um, so Officer Darisol's got his own problems right now. We're not going to talk about that. But I want to ask you about why the statements are so different. That I don't know. I, every statement they gave me, I turned it in. I don't know why it's so different. I mean, they might have got together and, and you know before then because they had got a call. I give them the number to call. Right. I can't. I, I really can't tell you why all of a sudden all of them is the same. But um, like I said, when I got down, they called me. I told them, don't bother them. Let them alone. I'll be down there as soon as I finish with camp. When I got down there, David was laying in the floor of the shower. And I and he told me, I said, I need to see medical. I said, well, David, you know we don't have no 24-hour medical, but I will put you on the urgent care list to see the medical in the morning. I don't know why this statement has changed. I mean, like, I haven't talked with anybody anymore because I know this is a critical thing. Because so, um, Daly asked me one day, he told me he want to talk with him. I told him, no, I don't want to talk to him about it. I don't want to discuss it with anybody. All right, so there's the F2 log. It shows what he's supposed to go report. Did you ever go down there and talk with him before? With Daly? Yeah. Not before this happened. Because their team that put them in there, they left about 7.30. And then we went into count. I made my rounds and we went into count. And when they called me and told me what was going on. And I told them, just leave them alone. Don't bother them. But when I got down there, that's when they started telling me. Darren Saul had opened the door. And the inmate bust out the door and he fell by the telephone pole. And that's when Daly told me Darren Saul had hit him. Hit him in his back or something. And so I said, Get up. Why would they put in there in the law book that you were down there and you gave them, you gave daily commands? That's what I'm saying. When I came down there. No, no, no. Before the incident with him getting hurt with Darisol, they've got you coming down there, giving instructions by Lieutenant Wiley several times to come out of the shower and go into cell 107. Daily refused to do so. Oh, this is when I was down there. That's all this had happened when I came down there. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Unit manager McBride is notified by you. Mm -hmm. Per McBride, inmate daily remain in the shower. So that's that's going along with what you said as he was putting the handcuffs on inmate daily. And that's the second time where the use of force comes in. You are correct and I'm wrong. Okay. I'm waiting okay. To say yeah, that. there was a, a second use of force that occurred. Uh -huh. No explanation, though, as to why the uh, state was to be so different. I, like I said, they already knew this was coming. They worked on the same shift. They could have gotten together and 
and try and wrote the tape, you know, decided what they were going to say, but I don't do, know why it was so difficult. Do you think, do you think that is something that they would do? Is get together and be like, hey, look, trouble's coming down, let's... I don't know these folks from Adam. If they walked up to me right now... I can't and, say that. I can't say yes. I can't say no to that question. And like I said, all I know, they knew y'all was coming because I had somebody had called me and told me to get a number to call them. And they worked the same shift. They working in the hole. So, I mean, they could have got together and signed the right statement to say. But I can't really say that they would do that. I can't say yes or no. I don't know. All I can tell you what happened when I got down there. So I can't really say what they did out there or what they did the other day. Do you have any problems between you and Swint or you and Higgins? No. No, I never had no why, problem out of them. Why they would throw you under the bus like this and say, she's telling us to change our statements? Because that's a pretty bad... I know what you're saying. I know it. But I don't know... They might do, and they never showed me that they had any problems. I never had any problems with anyone out here, you know. So I don't know. Do you and Darius all have a good relationship? No, it's pretty fair. I mean, you know? he was just another. I treat them all the same. I, I didn't you. have no special relationship with any of them. They all, I treated them all the same. Was there any animosity, animosity between Darius, Swint, and Higgins that you know of? If they were, they never mentioned it to me. You know, so I don't know. Most of the time when I go down there, they tease and laugh, and I, I thought they was okay. If it came down to it, and I had to bring a polygraph in, would you take a polygraph? I have no problem. I want you to step away from this incident for a second and answer this for me. If this was, if this was you as the investigator, and I'm lieutenant, mm -hmm. and it looks like I told my folks to change stories, what do you think should happen to me? Well, I've already got written up for this incident, so, I mean... How'd you get written up? Because um, I think you wrote me up for not doing the paperwork on time. I think that's what it was, to get my reprimand for that. Go back to that question. What do you think should happen to me? All right, if I don't already wrote you up and we don't went through the investigation, you know, I'll just leave it at the write-up. But, you know, I know other people have different opinions on what should happen. But let's say it turns out that I did tell my guys to change statements. Just leave it at the write-up? Yeah, never mind. Okay. So let me, let me get this out there so it's it's done and over with and, and we can wrap this up. And You in no way encourage anybody to change a statement. No. You're not covering for any of the officers, having them. No. Not covering for Darisol. We're trying to cover for him for what he did down there. Do you have any questions of me? No, sir. I don't. You seem kind of perturbed with me. No, I'm not. I'm tired. I've been running all morning. I got you. Trying to get one of the ladies her last day with us, and we were trying to prepare stuff for her. And I've been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm just tired. That's all. But I got if you. I've seen that way, I apologize. No, that's I. I didn't know if I'd done something to you or. No, you ain't doing okay. things to me. It just like I said, I'm just tired. I've been going ever since I got here this morning. It's the okay. first time I got a chance to sit down. We're going to go ahead and end this. It's uh, 26 after. I got to tell you, this is an unusual interview talking to an inmate from inside a prison. Uh, why did you feel so strongly that you wanted to talk to me? Well, because the people that need to get the proper attention are dying that don't need to be dying. If they have the proper, you know, staffing, people will get the attention that they need. This week, the GBI arrested the former warden for his role in a prison contraband ring. According to his affidavit, Adam took bribes from the notorious Yves Saint Laurent squad. YSL is the gang prosecutors say killed Bobby Kicklighter in the January 2021 botched murder for hire plot. His neighbor, a corrections officer, was the intended target. Is it fair to say that it really is the YSL prison? The Georgia Bureau of Investigations charged Adam with conspiracy to violate the Racketeering Influenced Corrupt Organizations Act, bribery, giving a false statement, and violation of oath by a public officer. In May of 2015, Captain Edgar Daniel Johnson, uh, Captain of the Georgia Department of Correction at the Emanuel County Women's Facility, was arrested and charged with sexual assault of no less than nine female inmates. We're here to make sure that this doesn't happen, and we want to do the best that we can to make sure that there's no person um, who has been incarcerated in the state of Georgia um, be allowed to be um, 
nonsense. That's what one civil rights advocate is calling a statement put out by Georgia's Department of Corrections Commissioner Tyrone Oliver. A simple cell flooding is escalating. Classification, a lot of people don't understand that that could be your most treacherous time in prison. But the article begins saying a death at the Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison in Jackson has prompted an investigation due to the death of Brandon Burrell while he was in custody at the state prison in Butts County over the weekend. Burrell's family said that they had to learn from another inmate over the phone what exactly happened to him. The inmate stated that Brandon had been stabbed by other inmates and he was bleeding out no correctional officers to be seen. Jail officials cannot confirm those details citing the active investigation, but just days before Burrell's death, the family emailed the jail and said that she knew her fiance was in immediate danger. 